ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ चॉइस इन रेनलाइज मार्सपिलाइजेशन एक्सीजन ऑफ रेनला एक्सीजन ऑफ रेनला विद ग्लैंड्स एंड स्क्रेरोथेरेपी आंसर ऑफ दिस क्वेश्चन इज एक्सीजन ऑफ रेनला विद एक्सीजन ऑफ ग्लैंड्स वेयर एक्सीजन इज नॉट पॉसिबल देन सेकंड चॉइस विल बी मार्सपिलाइजेशन आई एम प्रेजेंटिंग अ केस ऑफ 18 ईयर ओल्ड फीमेल प्रेजेंट टू मी विद 12 मंथ हिस्ट्री ऑफ स्वेलिंग इन राइट सेमेंडुलर रीजन The swelling was completely asymptomatic and there was a history of intermittent change in size of the swelling. The patient gave history of increase in swelling during eating and chewing. The patient visited to me with this recurrent episode of increase enlargement of this right sided submandibular swelling. You can see this CT scan showing hypointense area on the right submandibular region which is extending just below the floor of the mouth. On examination a diffuse soft flexuent non tender swelling about 5 to 4 cm in size was present in right submandibular region overlying skin was normal and temperature over the skin is normal on oral examination hardly any swelling seen on the floor of the mouth a diagnosis of cervical rhinoma was made as per the clinical and radiological finding Patient was taken for surgery where renula along with sublingual gland were resected out you can see in this picture and this sent for histopathology and found to be plunging type of renula in the submandibular region a plunging renula is an extravasation of saliva from sublingual gland due to trauma or obstruction of the duct fluid from obstructed duct dissected between the facial plane and muscle of the base of the tongue to the submandibular space The exact prevalence of plunging renula is not known. However, these lesions are considered uncommon. Most plunging renula either accompany a swelling in the floor of the mouth and are associated with the history of treatment of intraoral renula. It is not difficult to diagnose such lesion. On the other hand, the plunging renula in which there is no clinical evidence of oral connection, diagnosis become very challenging. Treatment of renula include marsupialization, excision of sublingual salivary gland, excision of renula with or without excision of sublingual glands, and sclerotherapy. Excision of sublingual salivary gland is key to minimize the recurrence. So, by choice, you have to go for excision of renula with excision of involved gland or excision of sublingual gland mainly, which are involved in the renula. A renula by definition is mucus filled cavity a mucosal in the floor of the mouth in relation to the sublingual gland the name renula has derived from the latin word rana which means frog the swelling resemble a frog translucent bluish color swelling in the floor of the mouth renula are characteristically large if it is more than 4 2 cm and appear as tense fluctuant and dome shaped vesicles sometime blue who color mainly large more than 2 cm small less than 2 cm the most common site is lateral floor of the oral cavity plunging renula occurs when the fluid pressure of mucin dissects through a perforation in the myeloid muscles in the submandibular space the etiology of renula is unknown but it has been described association with the congenital anomalies trauma and infection of sublingual glands these lead to extravasation of the ductal fluid into the acinar area which ultimately form the mucin which ultimately goes in the surrounding tissue form the renula there are four theories of development of plunging renula first the sublingual gland may exist as a ectopic sublingual gland below the myeloid that may exist as cervical side of the renula without intraoral component second a dissens in the myeloid may lead to plunging type of renula third there is during previous surgery there is damage of the myeloid muscle which lead to the plunging type of the renula and third there is a duct of the sublingual gland which join with the submandibular gland and there is infection of this gland or there is hypertension the secretions of the gland which lead to extravasation of fluid in the submandibular area that may 
occur as a plunging renula. So these are the fourth four theories of development of the renula. Differential diagnosis of cervical renula must include thyroglossal duct cyst, branchial cleft cyst, cystic hygroma, submandibular siloadenitis, intramuscular hemangioma, cystic or neoplastic thyroid disease, infectious cervical lymphadenopathy, hematoma, lipoma, laryngoseal, and dermoid cyst. These are the DDO of plunging renula. The most common postoperative complication is the recurrence of lesion, sensory deficit of the tongue, followed by damage of Wharton's duct. Another complication may be hematoma, infections, and dehiscence of the wound are rarely seen in the renula. And action of renula with associated sublingual salivary gland is the most accepted method to decrease the recurrence.